Hi, I'm Jerry Mitchellick, and the footage you're about to see is for entertainment value only. Please do not try this at home. I've been doing this for 30 years, and uh, safety is always number one. So, you want to shoot fast, huh? <laughs> I'm finally waking up today. <laughs> A lot of people ask me, well, how do I get to the next level? Well. You get to the next level by being the first one on the range and the last one to leave. Hi, I'm Jerry Mitchellack and welcome to this week's episode of Shoot Fast. What we have today is the Model 29. So, Smith & Wesson 29. What do you think, guys? Dirty Harry, man. This is the Dirty Harry stuff. Back in 1972, when I graduated high school, the Dirty Harry movies were just in its prime, so everybody had to have a Model 29. So I'll go through and show you the ones I had to buy back in 1974 when I actually found one. But to give you an idea of some of the movies, uh, Dirty Harry, The Enforcer, Magnum Force, Sudden Impact, The Deadpool, all Clint Eastwood movies featuring the Smith & Wesson products. I was pretty excited back then. I just, got, I just had gotten out of high school, had a good job, so I had to run out and buy me a Dirty Harry special. So this is the one I was enticed to buy. It's an 8 and 3 inch end frame blue gun, of course. Uh, six shot, 44 Magnum. Uh, I used it for a number of years. Shoot bowling pins back in the day when Richard Davis was holding his bowling pin shoots. Uh, but we found a 250 grain bullet about 1,000 feet a second. Worked really good on a bowling pin. But the other side of the coin is when we went out in the swamp to shoot fish and what have you and snakes, nothing really knocked a water moccasin off a stump just like a Model 29 could. So. You found a good water moccasin, you had your 29, you just had to make a good effort to make him fly into the sky. And this really uh, would send them that way. So that's an 8 and 3 inch 29, first 44 Magnum I had ever bought. It's a blued gun, still there, still shooting well. So this is just some of the samples that are of the variations available on that platform. And what you want to realize with the uh, 44 Magnum, and this and this end frame it's about the most usable package for the horsepower size versus what you get out of the performance as what the average guy can handle uh, I found out that I thought I could flinch till I bought a 44 when I when I bought this 4 inch 44 this blued gun I really found out how I could flinch and what it took to actually stop a flinch so this was one of my official snake guns for many years I carried it uh, in a swamp and we'd go on our escapades of Rampage, and uh, what can you say? It's a 44 Magnum, 4 inch, 6 uh, model 29. So, good gun. Had a lot of storage behind this. I've shot a lot of a lot of snakes with this one. Also, as as the 44 Magnum platform progressed, it wasn't until 1978 that they came out with the stainless steel version. So I have several stainless steel versions here to show you. Give you some idea, ideas what that looks like. This is also an end frame. They're all end frames. Six shot, six inch barrel. This is a classic DX. And what that meant to the guy back in the day when you bought this product was these were actually targeted by Smith & Wesson and they had to shoot an accuracy standard. I believe it was an inch and a half at 50 yards for six rounds. So I know most of these guns, the DX shot three inch groups at 100. So this was a six inch version of that. And this is an older gun. You notice it still has the hammer, the hammer nose mounted on the hammer. These were the forged parts on the hammer. So part of the transition into the uh, the new era, the new rifling. And this one also has a MIM trigger and a forged hammer. That's kind of a different combination. And as they progressed through the MIM parts, they were totally MIM. Now here's probably the ultimate package for his horsepower versus weight ratio. This is a 329. PD, which means it's a scanium frame, a titanium cylinder, and a stainless steel liner in the barrel. So this thing doesn't weigh but maybe 29 ounces or so. Very lightweight. It's a 4-inch. The only way I can shoot this thing properly, I had to send it to Magnaport, and you see on the top of the barrel here, these four parts, ports help direct the gases up to keep the muzzle down. This thing is pretty ferocious without magnaporting. So with the quadruporting option, it makes it a very usable package. If you were to live up north somewhere where you might face a bear or uh, animals that want to do you harm, this is probably the perfect package to carry, weight versus horsepower. So very, very effective package. 
And this is an old Magnaport conversion I wanted second chance. It's a 629. It was converted into a three and a, two and a half inch gun. It's also ported. Pretty neat round butt conversion back in the day when they were all square butt. So that's a true Magnaport conversion on a, on a model 629. I think I won that at second chance back in 1983. So it was pretty exciting back then to win a gun, especially one of this quality. So really nice package. Of course we have a, a nickel 29 also. This is a four inch. Kind of a rare gun now, of course. I don't think Smith & Wesson makes but a, a uh, special run of nickel-plated guns once in a while. So at one time, nickel was a standard catalog item. It wasn't uncommon to come across them. Also, another 629 we have here. This was a 5-inch full lug, but I had a barrel off of a 44 Special. I trimmed it back and fitted it to the uh, end frame. 20 to 629 here. It made for a very good carry gun. It's a lightweight package, uh, long sight radius, and not much weight. So I carry it in a holster periodically. And it's an excellent shooting gun, by the way. Uh, most of the 44 Magnums shoot exceptionally well. One thing Smith and Wesson always did on that on their 44s, the ball end diameter, of the cylinder fitted the bullet exactly right. So even the even back when they first came out with the 44 Magnum back in 1955. One of the things that they did was to hold the tolerances of the cylinder, the ball in diameter, to about 430 thousandths of an inch. So it made the guns very accurate. Most of the 29s you see here are capable of extreme accuracy at extreme ranges. So Elmer Keith, I don't know if you're old enough to remember Elmer Keith. He was the one, he was out of Montana. He was a big game hunter. His, uh, his experimenting with the 44 Special for a number of years, I think 10, 15 years, he wrote about his experiments with the 44 Special, how he hot rotted it with 2400 uh, powder and made the 250 grain semi wide cutter bu bullet and 2400 powder pretty famous for all us old guys. So he promoted Smith and he kept, I should say promoted, he helped promote Smith and Wesson to make the Model 44 Magnum, like you see it here today, with, with his. Uh, input and his cartridge development kind of led into what you see now as the modern 44 Magnum. Smith & Wesson actually had to jump on Ruger back in the day. They were the first guns available for the 44 Magnum caused quite a stir and then of course when Dirty Harry kicked in in 1971 you could not find a Model 29. It took me a couple of years to actually see one in a store and the first one I came across I bought so I'll give you an idea how hard it was to find a gun of any sorts back in the in the 70s and 80s and that's something else that a lot of people don't realize back in the early 80s when handgun shooting really was taking off it was hard to find a handgun 1911s revolvers were all scarce so you pretty much went to a gun store and you bought what you found so now this is a an interesting example of a 629 this is also a classic DX is an 8 and 3 8 I've got an optic on it and the reason it's set up this way is that I, I used to test a lot of 44 Magnum ammunition and this gun shot so well that it was my standard test platform. So if it didn't shoot well here, I knew it wasn't going to shoot in anything else. So I had shot several groups with this, got under an inch, six rounds, you know, under an inch at 50 yards. So it's capable of extreme accuracy. This model also has the endurance package on the inside. And what Smith & Wesson did, yeah, I know you can't see it, but when you cock the hammer into the firing position, there's a metal block that goes forward of the thumb latch and the reason for that was in the excessive recoil on some of the lighter guns the cylinder latch would actually uh, push forward and have a tendency to open the cylinder while the gun after the gun fired so that negated that possibility of that happening it was part of their endurance package they also the heat treatment has changed on these guns through the years so they make a really quality product and something else, a lot of guys talk about the, the new Smith & Wesson versus the old Smith & Wesson, the Forge versus this and that. But I can tell you now the CNC equipment that makes the products that you see here are such a finely tuned instrument in themselves and the quality control is so good that when they produce a cylinder, there's probably a hundred inspection uh, measurements taken on that cylinder. Back in the day it wasn't. So the cylinders that they make now are 100% exactly the same all the frames are better made, uh, the heat treatment is better. So what you get as a, as a product is a more consistent product from gun to gun. It's not to say that you couldn't find a gun back in the 50s that didn't shoot exceptionally well, but now they're all the same. So 
especially on a cylinder manufacturer, I do have to say they have really revamped the way they make a cylinder and it really makes for a better overall product. The quality of the rifling, the, treat, the heat treatment on the frame, the MIM parts are a great advancement because every part is the same. So if you buy a new gun, don't think you got a lesser product, you got a great product. So that just gives you some of the idea of what's available on the Model 29 in frames. Okay guys, we're going to start off with the 44 Magnum cartridge back to the days of Elmer Keith. This is what Elmer Keith designed. That's an Elmer Keith design original 240 grain Lyman mold. And what makes it an original is that it has a square grease groove on it. And also this tapered crimp groove. Uh, he wanted that square grease groove, the loop groove on it. So that's a Lyman, a Lyman mold true to the original Keith design. I want to say it's between 240 to 250 grains. It depends on the alloy. So Keith was pretty much into this phase of a, of a projectile. He didn't believe in a gas check. He shot a lot of 2400 IMR, 2400 propellant. So that this is what he brought to Smith & Wesson to build their guns with. And basically, it didn't take long for a lot of enthusiasts to add a gas check to it. So this is a Hensley & Gibbs 250 grain Keith style bullet with a gas check. You see the little copper cup on the bottom? And what that did on the, the bullet is to keep it from melting on its way down the bore, added to the consistency over a long duration of fire, uh, made it somewhat more accurate, depends who you talk to. But the big, the big thing did it, that it provided was uh, less leading of the barrel. So, so that's a Keith bullet with and without a gas check. This is a Hornady swedged 240 grain hollow point. It's got a knurling on the exterior and they put lubricant over the entire base of the bullet. Uh, bearing surfaces is a very accurate, it's a good 44 special bullet. Give you an idea what that looks like. Uh, this is a Seiko mold, another 250 grain. You can see the lube groove is exactly not where Elmer Keith wanted it, so it's not a true Keith pattern bullet. And this is a, a Lee. 200, uh, no, 310 grain gas check wide flat nose bullet. Uh, you'll see this on the range. I shot a lot of these when I was shooting through water, trying to shoot fish at a little bit deeper distance. <laughs> Back in the day when it was legal to shoot a garfish, we shot a lot of them with that, with that heavy bullet there. Going, going into some jacketed bullets, we'll go from the lightest available and that's a 180 grain hollow point. This is a Remington 180 grain hollow point. Next we have a 200 grain Hornady XTP, which you can tell by the actual nose design. They're, they're designed for different functions. The XTPs are noted for a little bit better penetration than the uh, conventional hollow points. A little bit different technology on the way it's fluted on the front. We have a, another Hornady. This is a 240 grain XTP. Also a jacketed hollow point, known for its ability to penetrate great distances. And also we have a Sierra 300 grain soft point. These are pretty much favored for extreme penetration and just a small amount of expansion. So there's no fluting on the outside, it's just a shoot through an object with more than the expansion. So that gives you an idea of some of the spectrum of the projectiles available for the 44 Magnum. So what you want to remember, you want to choose the bullet for the application and also the uh, size of the gun for the application. If you're going to carry it, the smaller guns, the larger guns, of course, for hunting or, or if you want to just have fun. So that. Hey guys, I'm pretty ramped up. I got a box full of Model 29s and 629s. I got a lot of ammunition. I got my trusty timer here. So all I need to do is head out to the range, get the timer going. And the way this timer works is every time you fire a shot, the sensor picks up the impact of the noise and I can go back and review everything I did and, and relate it to you as a performer. So I have guns, ammo, timer, I've got some quality MGM hardened steel targets and we're going to put all this together and make it happen. Hey guys, we're out on the range. It's early morning. I got a box of Smith & Wesson 44 Magnum revolvers. I mean life is good. Look at them guys. We've got a whole sack of them here. Pretty excited about this. Actually when I was back in the 70's, to give you how old I am, when, when Dirty Harry came out, everybody wanted a Model 29, so I actually got my original Model 29, my Dirty Harry Classic, and I've got a bunch of different models, but we're going to start out with a uh, 629, it's a six and a half inch DX, which means it's an accuracy proven product from Smith & Wesson, but 
We're going to do a build drill with it. I've got some 180 grain Magnum ammunition. So this stuff is really wicked. What you want to be aware of when you're doing this, I've got some really quality steel downrange. These are made by MGM. They are 500 Brunel. They are C-Zone targets. They're made for rifle shooting. So this 44 Magnum, when you're shooting targets, you have to remember you have to have rifle quality targets to receive all this energy that I'm going to give the target. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off with 180 grain Magnum ammunition. I'm going to try to come up from the, from the ready and pop that center target six times for an overall time and see how fast we can shoot at 629. Alright, let's go ahead and make it hot. Get everything ready here. Ah, right, it's going to be good, guys. 629 Classic DX. Six rounds of 180 grain Magnum 44 ammunition. And target in the middle. Here we go. Get some! <laughs> I'll tell you what, guys. It's been a while since I shot a 44, but that just gives you an idea of the horsepower there. <laughs> wow, I like that. Let's go take a look. <laughs> As you see guys, you have to have rifle quality steel to do this. That's a lot of horsepower. It's a 180 grain Magnum. That bullet is probably doing 1500 feet a second out of that gun. <clears throat> I was really surprised that it threw the target over. So That is pretty wicked guys. Let's go back and review the timer. I was having so much fun watching the target go over, I forgot to look at the sights. Let's go back and look at the timer see what we did here. <clears throat> I noticed a little bit of recoil there. I don't know if you did. But uh, let's go back and look at the splits. <clears throat> we had a... Let's go back to the first shot. .94. We had a 21, 18, a 20, a 21. So we were actually running... Let's see. That was actually right at a second, guys. That was 101. That was six rounds on target with a 44 Magnum in 101 seconds. So, not bad. Pretty exciting for me. So, I tell you what, let's go ahead and see if we can do a build drill with some 629 revolvers or some Model 29 revolvers. So, we're going to set up three guns. We're going to shoot one six times, throw it down, grab another one, shoot it six times, and throw it down and grab another one. It's going to be an 18 round drill on five targets. Let's see what that looks like. Hey guys, we're going to go ahead and shoot a V-drill with the 44 Magnum. The big problem here is it only holds six rounds of ammunition. I need 18, so I've got three revolvers on the table. So we're going to shoot a V-drill, pick up a revolver, shoot six rounds, throw it down, grab another one, shoot, shoot six, throw it down, and grab another one. So not only am I grabbing guns, I have to remember the sequence. So this is going to be my first time through it. I don't want to have to do this twice, guys. It's just too brutal. So I'll give you an idea what we're going to do. On the, on the clock. Gonna react, come up, shoot two, four, six, throw that gun down, grab a new one, two, four, six, get rid of that guy, grab another handgun, two, four, and six. So you see it mixed into three different segments, three different stages of fire in one. I don't want to do this but one time, we're going to do it cold and we're going to do it for the camera on the first take. Hey guys, I got my MGM target set up. I've got my three Smith & Wesson 629's here. I've got 180 grain Magnum ammunition. I'm going to do a V-drill. I'm going to start with all the handguns on the table, on the clock. I'm going to come up and shoot six rounds, get rid of a revolver, grab another one, shoot six, get rid of it, and shoot six more. What that means to me is a lot of work. I don't want to screw this up. I want to do it on the first take. So, I'm going to have to take my time, and let's see what it looks like. One V-drill. Here we go. My friend was a lot of work. <laughs> I don't know, guys. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed the, 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 <laughs> the revolvers I was shooting. I started off with the full lug 
six and a half inch gun. It was kind of heavy. It was pretty controllable. I got to that lightweight six and a half inch gun and it was just knocking my teeth out. When I picked up that four inch mountain gun, it was like three mules was kicking me. That thing, <laughs> that thing was jumping, man. Toward the end, it was it was really uh, putting a lot of thump on me. So anyway, that was 18 rounds. I think I skipped one on the center there on that four inch gun. The total time was a 9.49 hundredths of a second. With reaction time and picking up all the revolvers, 18 rounds. I think I got one off of the center target. Let's go ahead and take a look at these other targets. I'm right on the edge here. Not too bad. And on the edge here, I got no, right, two in the center. Two there. And uh, we've got two on the left target and then two on the far left target. Let's count these guys in the middle and see how many we have. One, two, three. That, that's the triple there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I skipped one right over his left shoulder on that four inch gun. When I picked it up, I was a little bit crooked and I got a little jumpy on the trigger, so. I might have to try that again. Okay guys, we're going to run this V-drill again. I've got my trusty 629s on the table, got my timer. It's going to be 18 rounds, 9 targets, hopefully doing about 10 seconds. Alright, let's make it happen. Here we go. Yeah! There it is! <laughs> Total time, 8.13, 8.13 total time, I'll take it. We made it, we made it, uh, total time, 8.13. So we've got uh, 18 rounds on nine targets from three different revolvers and a hair over eight seconds. So let's go ahead and take a look at the targets, count our hits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got ten in the middle, supposed to have ten. We got two on the right target, we got two on the far right. One on the edge, but it's still on there. Back to the left, we've got two on the left, and then two on the far left. So the whole sequence was 814, and if you divide it by 17, that's about uh, 0.47, under half a second average per shot, per gun, picking them up, reacting to the clock. So V-Drill, three model 629 Smith & Wessons. Okay guys, we did, a, we did a single target, six rounds, we're running about 20 splits. We shot uh, six rounds on target with, with a 44 Magnum right in one second. So we're going to make it a little bit harder. We'll take this rack of targets. We're going to start on the second one from the left, shoot it twice, shoot the center one twice, and the one on the side of it there twice. It's going to be three targets in a row, two, two, and two. I'm going to try to do this to where it sounds like I'm shooting one target, so I need to transition again in about 20 hundredths of a second. I've got that same 629 Classic DX, 180 grain, 44 Magnum ammunition, and we'll start on the second target from the left and come across 2, 2, and 2 here. All right, guys. <laughs> Let's give it a run. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I think I made the split times, guys. <laughs> 20, <laughs> we have average right about 22, 23 hundredths of a second coming across, so a little bit slower. <laughs> Tell you the truth, my hand is starting to hurt. So <laughs> there you got it, guys. Two, two, and two. Okay guys, I got the 629, got my timer, got a plate rack. Let's go ahead and shoot a plate rack left to right and see what that looks like. Alright, total time 226, so with reaction, six targets, 629 revolver. Okay, this is the fun segment. We've got our trusty test medium there, the cheap two liter bottles of soda. We've got some Hornady 180 grain 44 Magnum ammunition, bought from our good guys at Cheaper Than Dirt there. So, and I've got my trusty six and a half inch 629 Classic DX. I mean, can you get any better than this? Test medium, good ammunition, a great gun. And I know what you're thinking. Did he fire five or did he fire six? I'm gonna fire six, so keep your eyes on the bottles, guy. Here we go, we're gonna rip them open. Left to right. Here we go. And six. <laughs> we had a good dispersion here. Let's take a look at the targets. <laughs> we got one came back at us. As you can see, we have a pretty good dispersion radii going here. We had a piece of bottle come back at us. We have one on the ground. First shot was pretty much center mass. It has such a good explosion, it made me look back at it, and I nicked the second one right on the edge there, so it didn't do too good. Third one was about a center punch, took the guts right out of that one, while the fourth one just couldn't take it, had to leave. And the fifth one also, uh, as you can tell by what's left, it had a good experience, so 44 Magnum, 180 grain bullets, guys, just good stuff. Hey guys, we moved on the back range. We've got our voluntary bottles of shave cream there. We've got the Hornady Custom, hate it, uh, Hornady Custom 180 grain XTP factory ammunition. Should be doing about 1500 feet a second out of this six inch gun. So, on a timer, we're gonna start on the left and go to the right and see how much shave cream we can get in the air in the shortest period of time. All right, keep your eyes on the bottle guys. Here we go. Ah, and I'll tell you what, this is look, it looks pretty good, guys. We have a good dispersion radii here. I missed once. I got to looking back. It's having so much fun, it's hard to stay on your sight. Shooting is boring. The target experience is actually exciting. So let's go down range and take a look at them. So as you can see, guys, a lot of people think the 44 Magnum is kind of outdated. As you can see from that brief experience right there, there's a lot of horsepower available in a 44 Magnum. So give you an idea what, what some of the cans look like. We've got one stuck up in a tree here. We've got one here. Totally flattened out. It's totally flipped over, inverted, perfect center hit. Got lucky. But give you an idea what happens when you shoot stuff like that up close. We've got the, the top off of one of the cans. Must have center punched it and blew the top straight up. I give you an idea how far away it is. Let me step it off for you. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Right at <laughs> right at twenty yards, guys. That's the top of the can. So that one got center punched, got airborne, went twenty yards. I don't know how high it went in the sky, but uh, it fell basically a couple of seconds after the last shot so it made a pretty good arc 
So that gives you some of the ideas of uh, some idea of what the 44 Magnum can do. But let's do some other things. I know what you're thinking. If a bottle of shave cream is good, purple cabbage has to be better. And as a matter of fact, purple cabbage is the perfect test medium. Through many hours of uh, testing, I found that the purple cabbage reacts very nicely to high velocity. So there again, I got the Hornady 180 grain XTP. I've got the Smith & Wesson 629 Classic DX. We're gonna shoot that center cabbage, <laughs> center cabbage, the cabbage on the left, right in the center. So keep your eye on that cabbage on the left, guys. We're gonna just take our time. Let's see if we can make him disappear. Cabbage on the left. Here we go. Not bad. Not bad. Let's take a quick look where we hit. Okay. But you gotta remember, guys, not all cabbage is created equal. We've got one on the right. Maybe it's a little bit better. I'm gonna get down a little bit low here. See if we can thump him right through the center. Cabbage on the right. No, that one wasn't too good either. Anyway, we've got more and better things. Here we go. Hey guys, the cabbages went pretty good. We've changed our test subjects down there. We have a cantaloupe and we have a watermelon. So, same 180 grain Hornady XTP ammo, same revolver. Shoot the cantaloupe first. And I noticed that the watermelon has a little bit of a smirky face on him, so we're gonna do him second. So, cantaloupe on the left. Let's see what a cantaloupe looks like. 44 Magnum. Ah! <laughs> All right. Smiley face, watermelon, here we go, right in the middle. Ah, yes, melon is good, still raining. It's, oh, that's it. Had a good, a very good dispersion on the watermelon, so. Wow. <laughs> Maybe we found the, the perfect test medium. Anyway, let's take a look at what we did. As you can see from the shot on the cantaloupe, it really put a lot of trauma in what was left on the table. You know it's really pulverized all the way down to the rind. That gives you some of the idea of what velocity does to a test medium, especially when it has a lot of fluid in it. So, uh, did great on a cantaloupe. And of course the watermelon, as you can see, it has totally left the scene. It has gone. It's got pieces. We've got dispersion radii, guys. I'll give you an idea. We're going to walk this way. Let's take a few steps this way. We got one, two, three, four, five. This would be six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Got a piece of watermelon twelve yards away. We've got some more this way. Got a piece of cantaloupe about fifteen yards away. Piece of cabbage, and I think there's another piece back this way. So. Here's some cabbage. We're a good 15 yards, a good 15 yards upwind from where the cabbage was. And over here, ah, looky here, guys. <laughs> That's a piece of watermelon with shave cream on it. We're a good 25 yards from where we shot that target. So, gives you an idea of the 44 Magnum is alive and well. Okay, we've got one of my favorite test subjects right here. It's a five pound can of white hominy. What we're gonna do here, we've got the seam of the can, the uh, seam of the can facing right toward the shooter. I'm gonna try to punch it about three and a half inches off the bottom. 
What I'm trying to do is hit as much solid mass as I can. There's a lot of fluid on top. When you do this with a 460, the can absolutely disintegrates. I've never done it with a 44. So I actually want to sound pretty, uh, pretty excited about testing this out. It's a dirty job, but uh, somebody's got to do it. Got the 180 grain magnums. I got my test can downrange. Let's see what it looks like. One can, one bullet, right there at center. Here we go. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I got, uh, I got Hamni eyes here. <laughs> yeah, get some. That was a good one, guys. That one actually went pretty good. It had a good dispersion. Could you see it on the camera? It was raining down. We got we got Hamni stuck in the trees here, <laughs> 10, 15 feet up. All right, come on down, range. Let's take a look at the dispersion radii. <laughs> We're gonna try to zoom in on it. We've got some some of the Hamni stuck way on top of that tree here, in that little pine tree. So it absolutely had a good 360 degree burst. Let me go find the can amongst all this carnage here. Yeah, 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 oh, I was a little bit higher than what I thought, so I hit it about mid-section though, but it still did, uh, give you an idea, guys, there's the, there's the actual bullet jacket inside the can, so it didn't go through the can, so it dispersed all the energy available inside the can. So what you saw there was a total energy dump inside a five pound can of corn. And uh, what can you say, you saw it come back, good performance. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little penetration test for you right quick. We've got three gallon uh, bottles of water. I've got that 180 grain XTP. Remember, it's a very lightweight bullet. It's made to expand. We're going to go ahead and shoot those jugs and see how many bottles that we pierced. And then we're going to go to a bigger and heavier bullet. Give you an idea what the difference is. All right, 180 grain magnum. Let's see how far it goes in these bottles of water here. Right in the middle. All right. Let's take a look at it, guys. See what we did. Okay, you can see the 180, 180 grain magnum is, is designed to dump its energy quick. You see the first bottle, it took most of, the, most of the energy available. The second one had a piece of frag come through, probably the base of the bullet somewhat, and it continued on, pretty much peed it out, and it barely, if you look at the third bottle, it barely made a hole in it, so we've got about that much penetration. Now we're gonna change it up. We're going to put up some fresh bottles and we're going to go to a 310 grain hardened lead bullet. So this bullet is designed to penetrate in a straight line. So we're going to put up some fresh test medium and go ahead and shoot it. Oh. Okay, we shot a 180 grain magnum. That's the light end of the, of the spectrum on a 44 magnum. It's going extremely fast. It's made to expand. You saw how the first jug really took the licking. We've got a 310 grain. This is a cast lead bullet. It's been hardened. So we've got a hardened 310 grain bullet. Probably going 350 feet a second slower. It doesn't have a jacket. It's made to penetrate in a straight line. I'm thinking we can go through every jug available there. We've got three and a half jugs there. So we'll go ahead and put this hardened lead bullet in there and see what kind of penetration we have. All right, here we go, guys. Eyes on the bottle. As you can see, the difference in bullet construction and velocity made a vast difference on how far this projectile penetrated. We center punched it right there to the center. First bottle had a pretty good concussion. Second bottle went right on through also. The third bottle straight on through, right through the middle. It hadn't even started to tumble yet. So it went through three gallons of water and the bullet is still dead on. And this fourth bottle was laying on edge. It went through the bottom right here and it came out the top and it's still going somewhere in the berm so you're looking at the difference of uh, almost twice the bullet weight but a hardened construction is made to do that drill a straight line 
good for shooting a bear or something like a rhinoceros. If you got rhinos in your front yard or hippopotamuses in the, in the backyard and you have problems, that might be the ammunition you want to carry. So give me some idea of the difference in the different ammunitions for the 44 Magnum. So what you think guys, Dirty Harry is alive and well, 629 man, I haven't shot one in a while, I, I'm guilty about it, not being out on the range with a, with a 44 Magnum in, in a number of years, it brought back some fond memories of uh, when I was trying to shoot <laughs> as, a, as a young guy. Anyway, that gives you some idea of what's, what's available in, in, in this package, a lot of horsepower, a lot of fun, a very flexible cartridge, and you can see by some of the things that we shot there, it's very powerful, so there it is guys. 629 Smith & Wesson. Hey guys, I'd like you to subscribe to MitchLeck.com. We've got a Barrett M107 hopefully coming in this week. And I'd also like some input from you guys on what you'd like to see next. So please subscribe, keep watching, and we've got some really good stuff coming.